This presentation addresses the major pests targeted by Apple IPM efforts. To get a good perspective on insect pest management in tree fruits, it helps to look at how the host and pest interactions are impacted by ecological characteristics of orchard crops, which tend to be fairly complex agroecosystems as compared with say vegetables and field crops. Factors that contribute to the, the, this complexity of host pest interactions in tree fruits include their perennial nature. A commercial orchard typically has a productive life of 20 to 25 years. And since there can't be any crop rotation during that time, insect populations can easily get established in and around the plantings. Also, orchards are highly diverse habitats with numerous ecological niches. This is true for all agronomic crops, but probably none are as well developed as in an orchard. You've got the crown and the root zone, the trunk and main scaffold branches, the shoots, foliage, and fruit. And depending on the tree size, there can actually be distinct zones of the canopy, top, middle, and lower, as well as inside and outside. Then there are the within row areas between the trees and the row middles or alleys. These can all accommodate a variety of invertebrate and vertebrate species and secondary host plants, and therefore a diversity of potential pests and natural enemies. Next, consider tree fruits as a food resource. Now, if you look at an apple, what you have is essentially a big sack of fiber, sugar, water, and nutrients, all of which get zeroed in on by pretty much whatever is in the area. And finally, orchards are frequently located near abandoned wild or volunteer fruit trees where pest populations are not controlled. So these alternate hosts provide a refuge from which pests can immigrate in to infest the commercial plantings. But there's a long list of insects and mites that can threaten apples. Well over 200 different arthropods have been documented as potential pests in apples and although no orchard has all of them, the typical New York apple grower can count on having to manage up to 15 or 20 of the most common pest species each season. In the group of direct pests which attack the fruit, we have a number of Lepidoptera, and these are all tortricid moths, a very important uh, family in the Lepidoptera. It includes coddling moth, oriental fruit moth, lesser apple worm, and oblique banded leaf roller. One key pest is a fly in the order Diptera, that's the apple maggot. And there's at least one beetle, one that's a beetle in the Coleoptera, and that's Plum Curculio. Interestingly, also in the Hymenoptera, which uh, are normally considered beneficial since this order uh, includes bees and parasitic wasps, we have a pest, European apple sawfly. Now indirect pests attack other parts of the tree like the foliage, branches, trunk, and roots. This group also contains some moths such as spotted teniform leaf miner and dogwood borer as well as uh, other borers uh, such as black stem borer, which is a beetle, and a, a number of other leaf rollers. New York actually has several dozen native leaf roller species that can be found in apples, although most are not typically pests. Then in the group of uh, Hemiptera, the true bugs, we have a, a variety of aphids, green apple aphid, rosy apple aphid, woolly apple aphid, spirea aphid as well as leafhoppers, white apple leafhopper and potato leafhopper. And also in this order is San Jose scale. And of course, in terms of mites, there's European red mite and two spotted spider mite. So looking at the life cycles of some of the key apple pests in New York, we'll start with plum curculio. This is native to North America and has one generation per year in New York. It attacks all tree fruits, not just plums. The adult overwinters, usually in nearby wooded areas, and emerges at bloom and searches for newly set fruits to oviposit in. The female cuts a slit in the skin with its mouth parts and lays eggs singly just under the surface. You can see it here in this plum. 
As it happens, apple is not a very good host for this insect because the eggs usually get crushed by the pressure of the fruit as it expands. In softer stone fruits like peaches, cherries, and plums, the egg is able to hatch into a grub, as you see here, uh, which feeds in the tissue as it develops and then leaves the fruit and drops to the ground to pupate. Apples that are attacked sometimes abort and drop to the ground, which allows the larvae to hatch out and develop inside the dropped fruit. And then they exit the fruit into the soil to pupate. The adults emerge from the ground later in the summer and can do some feeding damage to nearly ripe apples, as you see here, before they head to their overwintering sites. You can see a picture of an apple at harvest here showing quite severe oviposition scars that didn't result in actual infestation because there are actually no insects inside this apple, but obviously it's not marketable because of the damage. Oriental fruit moth is a member of the tortricid family. It's a very important insect, has at least three generations per year, and sometimes even four during long hot seasons, particularly in the Hudson Valley. The adult is a mottled dark gray moth that starts to fly in late April or early May in New York during the late pink to early bloom stage. And the female, the female lays single eggs on the upper surface of the leaf shoots. The first generation larvae feed on the foliage in apples and peaches. They often enter the terminal at the base of a young leaf and tunnel toward the ba base of the shoot, which causes the leaf to wilt and die back, producing these flagged leaves that you see here, which is especially common in peaches. The later broods concentrate on the developing fruits, feeding on the internal tissue and leaving messy frass around the outside of their entry hull. Coddling moth, which is also a tortricid, has two generations per year and a similar biology to the oriental fruit moth. Adults emerge during mid-bloom and lay eggs singly on or near the fruit, so they don't have far to travel once they hatch. They enter and develop entirely within the fruit, causing severe tunneling damage, sometimes even eating the seeds. And also, of course, very ex noticeable external damage. Okay, now European red mite is a very cosmopolitan apple pest that occurs nearly everywhere in the world that apples are grown. They overwinter as bright red eggs on the bark around the base of the buds and fruit spurs. The eggs hatch at tight cluster toward the end of April in New York and go through several generations per year, at least four or five, and as many as seven or eight, depending on the season. Both the adults and the immatures feed on the foliage by rasping away at the mesophyll tissue, which, which creates a, a bronzing effect, as you can see in this photo, uh, this bronzing uh, appearance to the leaves. Now this damage impacts the tree's health and by extension, fruit quality. Severe inf infestations can even cause defoliation. Adults generally reduce their feeding and start to produce winter eggs by mid to late August. Oblique banded leaf roller is another tortricid but this one is native to North America. It has two generations per year and a somewhat different life cycle since it overwinters as a partly grown larva, which resumes development early in the spring as soon as temperatures are favorable. The larvae, the larvae of the overwintered generation are fully grown by bloom time and feed in the blossom clusters, often including the newly set fruitlets. Most of those with feeding damage drop prematurely, but some stay on the tree and continue to grow until harvest, exhibiting these deep corky scars and indentations. Larvae of the summer generation initially feed on the foliage, which they roll up and web together, and then move to, the, to feed on the surface of developing fruits starting in late July, leaving stings and shallow pits. This damage is actually more serious than early spring feeding since most of the injured fruit remains on the tree and can go unnoticed at harvest, allowing further breakdown and necrosis to occur while the fruit is in storage. Finally, apple maggot, another native species, originally bred in hawthorns and later adopted apple as a host. It has a single generation per year in New York, but in more Southern states, there can be two. The adults emerge from the soil starting in mid-June 
And after a week to 10 days of feeding, they mate and females search for fruits to oviposit in. They lay their eggs just under the apple skin, as you see in this unmanaged apple. Most backyard apple trees have fruits that look like this, by the way. And after hatch, the larvae, which are maggots, tunnel through the flesh as they develop, leaving small brownish trails. Over time, these get larger and more severe and usually show bacterial decay. <laughs>